guys welcome back to the channel today is the 3rd of march i am in full pajama mode but at least i don't have my hair scraped back i have had a bath today so my hair is clean so i was like this is as dressed as i'm gonna be today don't want to leave it another week to open the vlog so here i am um so yeah start of march um it's now about quarter past five in the afternoon and there's still just enough light to film so that's very pleasing uh, it's been a very busy <laughs> and intense start to the month. Um, if you watched my February wrap up, which I will link in the description, uh, you will know that we accepted an offer in our house um, in the middle, towards the end of February, um, which then meant we had to frantically go out and house hunt ourselves. We spent all of yesterday from literally, we left the house at 8.45 and we get home at four, um, house hunting. We saw seven houses. We put an offer in on one, which was rejected because a cash buyer had also put an offer in. We can't compete with that. So that was like, okay, fair enough. Um, and we have found another house of those seven that we are putting an offer in on tomorrow morning. It's currently Sunday afternoon. By the time we had finished viewing and like had intense conversations in the car about what to do, we rang the agents and they'd already closed for the day. So it was like, okay, this is gonna have to wait till Monday. So tomorrow morning, I will be at work, uh, but Gary will be in contact with the agent to put an offer in and we will obviously see how that goes. So that was yesterday. So that was all very intense. Um, it was a Charlie weekend for us, but he very sensibly opted to stay at home and he's 14 now. So, oh, hello, Sav. We were comfortable leaving him with all his like, regular check-ins and stuff and he had plenty of stuff to make sandwiches, etc. for himself. Oh, hello. Hi, I'm talking to, like, I'm talking to Booktube. Hi. <laughs> Can you see the camera? Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, I'm going to go over here. Um, yeah, so he very sensibly opted to stay here. Um, and then today, it's Mother's Day in the UK next Sunday, but Charlie's with his mum. Um, and so we'd arranged to go over to my brother-in-law's for an early Mother's Day with the in-laws and stuff and Charlie. Um, but I've, I had to kind of opt out. Uh, because it's also mock season and my year 11s sat there exams last week and the deadline is next week to get it all marked and sorted out and I also had year seven marking to catch up on and I just had to tap out and I felt awful about it because I hate missing family stuff but because we've been house hunting after school every day this week I've been leaving school at like four o'clock which is two hours before I normally do so that was 10 hours that I lost not lost but like spent house hunting rather than working um and so I just had to make the time up somewhere and it had to be today so I have spent all of today marking and sorting my life out basically um and now it's suddenly Sunday evening and I've got to do it all again next week and it's just like oh gosh I feel like I have not had any downtime this weekend let's put it that way but there we go sometimes big life stuff happens and you just have to do the best you can so um oh I'll also show you my I feel, always feel weird saying my mother's day gifts from Charlie because it's not I'm not his mother um I'm his parent um, but it's nice that he chooses to celebrate me um, on Mother's Day. So yeah, he, oh, that's just fallen out. He, um, I'm just putting this back together. He very kindly picked out two gifts for me and a really lovely card. I know he said an excellent card and you'll see why in a minute. Um, but he also, this was one of the, I need to tie that up. This is one of the labels that he did for me. Um, and I keep these as bookmarks. I'll put the date on it and then keep it as a bookmark. I have a whole bunch of those. Um, so this was the card that he got me. It says, you are exceptional, well done. And then he was lovely enough to write inside it for me as well. It just says, to Vicky, happy stepmother's day to an excellent rated stepmom. Love, CJ. So that was really sweet. And then uh, he did good on the gifts. So he picked out um, this body shop set, which has got three um, shower gels in it. I think it's, yeah, pink, grapefruit, strawberry and British rose. So... That's very, very nice. And then he picked me out some pyjamas because he has clocked that his stepmother loves a pyjama set. So these are from Next. I will, if I if they're still available, I will find them and link them. And then these um, giraffes. How cool are these? And then uh, the trousers. Oh, they're attached. I haven't done all, any of this yet. And then these bright pink, very comfortable looking, very soft pyjamas. So yeah, that's really exciting. Um, so that's been super nice. And then books, I have finished two books. So the first book that I finished was an audiobook, but I will put a picture up here. Um, and that was Perfect Silence by Helen Fields and it was narrated by Robin, Robin Lang again. This is book four of the Luke Kalanak series. I gave it 4.5 out of five stars. I really liked it. 
If you don't know what I'm talking about, it is a police procedural set in Edinburgh. We are following D.I. Luke Kalanak, who uh, has moved from France in the first book and comes across to Edinburgh and joins the, I can never remember what it's called, Serious Crime Unit, Major Investigations, I think. Or like, it's the murder squad, basically. Um, and we're also following DCI Ava something or other. I can't remember what her name is. Um, in this one, we have a serial killer who is making dolls out of skin. Let's put it that way. These books are super dark, super violent, super kind of detailed and graphic. So just be aware of that. But I just love this series. This one, <coughs> these are all rereads for me. Um, this one, I remembered how it came together. But there is like part way through the book, I would be amazing if anyone could read this book and not get part way through and start wanting to yell at the characters it's them they're over there and I just love the tension of that so yeah I gave it 4.5 stars I think also Robin Lang might be my favorite ever audiobook narrator at this point I'm completely obsessed I'm gonna be carrying on with my reread so you'll probably see me read another one of these at some point this month um and then the second book that I finished this month was Mary Poppins the original story by P.L. Travers I'm going as Mary Poppins uh on World Book Day which is this Thursday as I'm recording this I just tried on my costume today it's currently in the washing machine that's probably what you can hear behind me um and I'd never read the book, so uh, I read the book. <laughs> and I can see why P.L. Travers hated the Disney movie. Um, she very famously detested Walt Disney and what he did with her character. And I can see why, because Mary Poppins is nothing like the Julie Andrews version or the Disney version. Um, I quite enjoyed this. It's sort of a collection of short stories. I gave it four stars. It's a middle grade story about a magical nanny who is nothing like, like I said, the Julie Andrews version. Um, but yeah. I read this, I quite enjoyed it. I'm excited to go as her for World Book Day. I've even got myself an umbrella with the parrot head, but you will see that later on in the B-roll. And yeah, it's kind of, I was like, should I give it a 3.5? Because it's very much, it's a book and I read it, but actually parts of it did feel really nostalgic and I did enjoy it, so I gave it four stars. So there was that one. Okay, it's Sunday night, the boys have just left. I need to go and make my lunch for tomorrow, uh, get the house tidy and then collapse in a heap and try and recharge my batteries in not enough hours. It's the 9th of March, and I know I say this literally every clip that I sit down, but wow, what a week. <laughs> Lots of things have happened this week. So let's go in chronological order. Firstly, I was off sick work on Monday with migraine. I have been struggling mentally for the last couple of weeks. I don't do well with change. There's change happening at work. We've got a new... Um, our current head teacher is retiring at the end of this year, so we've got a new head teacher coming in. We've also... Our safeguarding leader's leaving, so we've got a new... Uh, safeguarding lead coming in um i think in term five we've got staff that are, are leaving and new staff coming in which is normal for this time of year because like the teacher like transfer window is up until easter so all of that's going on at work obviously we're moving and there's home stuff going on which i'll tell you about in a minute and then we had some family stuff happen this week as well positive stuff but there's just so much change and my brain is going i don't know how to cope with this so yeah uh my brain did what it does occasionally which is it overheated and forced me to have a day off on Monday, which was not ideal. Made the rest of my week harder, but there we go. So I was off sick Monday. Uh, we put our offer in for the second house uh, that I told you about in the previous clip um, on Monday morning. And then after some back and forth and a little bit of negotiation and haggling and stuff, we finally agreed a deal on Tuesday morning. Um, and we have had our offer accepted. So there is still a long way to go. The process is super complicated and long, and I won't bore you with it. Partly because I don't entirely understand it myself this is the first time I'm going through this process uh at the moment it's taking sort of four to six months um for everything to happen so we've got quite a wait ahead of us the property that we're buying 
uh, has a tenant in it. So they've been given notice to leave. Um, and they, both times we saw it, like the house has not been kept in the best condition. So we're not quite sure what we're going to get when we open the front door, but we will see. Uh, but for now, touch wood, you're sat on our wooden coffee table. Oh, bye, Sav. Um, we've had our offer accepted. So that's really good. And now we're just dealing with like tons of paperwork and questions and all kinds of decisions being made. So yeah, my brain is a little bit swirly with that. Then on Wednesday evening, yes, Wednesday evening, I got a text from my stepmom to say that my sister was in labour with her baby, which is very exciting. She was a couple of days, I think three days overdue at that point. So we were kind of, I was kind of expecting that we had still had a bit of a wait. Uh, but yeah, my stepmom texted to say that my sister was in labour, which is very exciting. And then woke up on Thursday morning, which was also World Book Day, to say that I had a niece, which is very exciting. She had her daughter, um, which is super, super lovely. My first niece or nephew. And yeah, it was just really lovely. And it's like, like I said, it's just, you know, family stuff. There's now a new like whole person in our family. And, you know, my sister's become a mum. And it's all just, yeah, it's really exciting and lovely. Uh, so that was really nice news to wake up to. And then also on Thursday, like I said, it was World Book Day. So I'll put a picture up here of me in my full Mary Poppins regalia. Um, it was a very funny day. The kids were hilarious. Uh, I had to teach the Is This a Dagger I See Before Me speech from Macbeth dressed like this. Um, and bless my year 10s, they did their best, but they just could not take me seriously. So we did it again on yesterday, on Friday. Uh, we had another read through of it. I think they got it more that time. Um, I was deeply uncomfortable. I hate dressing up. The outfit that I got was from Amazon. I will link it in case it's of interest to anyone. It was perfectly fine. It wasn't see-through or anything like that. It was just this really horrible, like, polyester material. And I have quite a few sensory things. And I was just really uncomfortable all day, but it was worth it because, yeah, the kids loved it and loads of the staff dressed up and it was just a really fun day, although exhausting. So that's everything that's happened this week. We've got our first weekend off that we've had for ages. I mean, I know we went away. I mean, we did go away in February. But even that weekend, we were like looking at house stuff online and having constantly massive conversations. So this feels like the first weekend in a while where it's like, we don't have to house hunt. You know, we're just kind of sitting tight at this point. Um... And I'm feeling a little bit close. I, well, I was going to say I feel a bit burnt out. So I experienced true burnout last June. And I don't think I'm at that point yet. But I do feel like I'm headed that way. So I'm trying to take some steps to head that off. Um, and the biggest thing for me is literally just resting. Putting my feet up and doing nothing. Which is really hard for me. Um, however, this weekend we have no plans. I was going to sit and film all of my March content and all that kind of stuff, but I've taken the decision that I'm going to film one more video after this, which is to show you my bookmarks. And by the time this video goes up, that will be up. So I will show you, in case you haven't seen, that spring, aka Miss Molly. And then we have Sweet Savannah for summer. Then we have Jack Jack for autumn. And then we have all three of them for winter. Obviously, these are like double sided, but I just wanted that's the easiest way I can think of to show them. Um, all designed by the amazing Amy at Nonfiction Feminist. Um, so I'm going to film that video because I want to get the bookmarks. They've been in my house for about two weeks now and I want to get them up on the Etsy and start raising some more, more money for charity. In case you don't know, this is a charity channel. Uh, at least half my AdSense, no, all of my AdSense. 100% of my AdSense goes into the charity pot, 100% of the Etsy money, so the money that I make from selling bookmarks goes in there, and at least half of any paid content goes into the charity account, and then I will donate it on the 31st of December. This year we are splitting it between Crisis and the Trussell Trust, uh, which are two UK-based charities who uh, Crisis um, help homeless people, uh, specifically in the Trussell, Trussell Trust does food banks and all the associated kind of um, stuff around that. Uh, so I'm going to film that. I'm also going to film the opening for a secret vlog project, which you guys probably will not see for quite some time. At the time of filming this, I literally don't know when you will see that video uh, because it's a collaboration and with a company. And I don't know when the finished product will be ready. Is that as vague as possible? <laughs> um, so I'm going to film those things and film this clip, obviously, and then edit the bookmark video and get the bookmarks up on Etsy ready for tomorrow. And then I'm not doing anything else really this weekend. I've got a little bit of like, I need to do a food shop online, laundry as always. But I'm not doing anything stressful or difficult. I'm just trying to take a moment to breathe. I've got three weeks left of term. 
Um, we've got Gary's birthday coming up at the end of the month, which I also need to do a bit of organising for this weekend. Uh, but yeah, I'm just trying to take care of myself and I've barely been reading. Like My reading has dropped quite dramatically. I have finished two books, but I finished one on Sunday after I spoke to you and the other one was a four hour audiobook that I listened to on the way to and from work over the last couple of days. So I definitely feel like I need to sit and read. My TV, like, I don't do TVLs anymore, but like my priority stack for March is over there and it's still got seven books on it. And I feel like I have not got a chance of finishing it this month. But it is what it is and my brain just feels really tired. So yeah, I'm going to take the rest of March off. This will be the first video back that you'll see from me in April. So thank you for being here and I apologise, but sometimes... Sometimes you just need to take some stuff off your plate, even if it's the stuff you enjoy, because I love making videos and like being online and stuff, but also I just don't have it in my tank right now. So yeah, that's what's been going on. Let's talk about books. And then I've got a quick few other stuff, bits to film, and then I'm gonna go put my feet up. So the first book that I finished was uh, Hedgewitch by Sky McKenna. I loved this middle grade. Also, just let's just do a close up of the, if I get my face out of the way, it will, it will focus better of the cover, which I'm obsessed with. I would really love a print of this. Um, I picked this up completely at random on my birthday. I'll put the birthday vlog where I bought it in the description as well. Um, so the lovely, uh, who was it? So it was the lovely, my brain's going, what? Charlie, Olivia Savannah, and um, I, was, I was gonna say Olivia's catastrophe, that's Olivia's channel, Amelia all clubbed together and bought me book vouchers for my birthday from an indie bookshop called Mr B's Emporium in Bath. Still one of, it's will always be one of my favourite bookshops anywhere. Um, I've still also got some book vouchers to spend in there as well. I didn't spend all of it on my birthday. I've still got a little bit left. But one of the books that I picked up completely at random was this. This was face out on a shelf um, full of like the booksellers recommendations. And I just saw it and I was like, yeah. And the tagline there says, witches aren't born, they're made. And I just love this. I gave this four and a half stars. This kind of gave me um, Nevermore vibes. I'm just pointing at something you can't see. Um, let's pull it out. Um, yeah, it kind of gave me a similar vibe to Nevermore. I guess you can see why. Um, and we're following Cassie or Cassandra, who has been left at a boarding school by her mother when she was seven. And she lives this really miserable existence there. She's bullied. Everything is very grey. There's no joy or excitement in her world. And she decides to run away. And... I can't remember how old she is. I think she's like 11 when she decides to run away. Um, and as she's running away, she comes across this talking cat who tells her that her aunt, who she knew nothing about, is the head witch. And he takes her uh, basically to a family that she never knew she had. And it's about what happens to her. And it's the first book in at least a trilogy. I know there's a second one out already and a third is coming. Um, and I just absolutely bloody loved this. The kind of the way that Cassie's written, you are immediately on her side. She loves books and reading. And you can tell that the author is someone who loves books. And that doesn't always come across. And I really love it when I find a book where it's like, yes, clearly this author loves books. There is found family in the sense of uh, she makes friends with a group of other girls her age in the village. And they kind of cobble themselves together, this little found family. Plus, there's obviously the family that she finds and that she didn't that she didn't know she had. And there's like the members of staff and stuff that work for her aunt and they all kind of become this support network for her. There's magic. It's also my favourite kind of magic, which is this very kind of earthbound magic. Um, there's, like I said, there's a talking cat. She learns to fly a broomstick and I was just cheering her on the entire way. I gave it four and a half. The ending didn't quite give me the five star feeling, but this is a debut. Um, Sky McKenna is an Australian author. Um... And I just thought it was fab and I really want to read the second one. And the second one is called, I think there's a there's a thing of it. Um, so there is, what is it called? It's also illustrated gorgeously all the way through. So yeah, Wood Witch is already out. And then I think Sea Witch is coming. Is it called Sea Witch? Yeah, Sea Witch is out this year at some point. And I just really loved it. Plus my other sister, my the youngest sister, not the one that just had a baby, um, saw that I was reading this on Instagram and said that she's reading it to, with or to uh, one of the kids that she's nannies. And I was like, that's such a nice connection. So yeah, I love this, highly recommended. If you were looking for a magical middle grade that is in a similar vein to uh, Nevermore, it's also got a bit of like the worst witch kind of vibe to it. 
I would definitely recommend this. Absolutely loved it. 4.5 stars. Then I did my first reread of the month. Not this whole thing. Uh, this is a bind up. Um, but I read uh, The Eagle of the Ninth by Rosemary Sutcliffe. Like I said, this is the bind up of all three books. You can see how old this one is from the state of it. Whoops. Um, this was a gift from my brother. I wish I'd put the date in it, but it was a Christmas present years ago. I was at uni. Um, and he loves this chronicle, this series, this trilogy. And he wanted me to read it. Um, and I hadn't read it for years, so I picked up the audiobook. I listened to the one that's narrated by Charlie Simpson. I would definitely recommend that one. It had music and sound effects and stuff. And we're following a Roman soldier who is investigating the loss of the Eagle the Ninth, which is like their like standard thing or like trophy or whatever, um, with his former slave. And yeah, I gave it four stars on reread. I gave it five stars the first time, gave it four stars this time round. I enjoyed it. It was an enjoyable, easy read. I didn't feel any kind of emotional attachment, which is why I couldn't give it any higher. But yeah, I reread it, enjoyed it, would recommend it. If you're looking for historical fiction, would recommend that one. I don't really have loads to say on it, to be honest, which is probably also why it's a four star. Okay, that's the update for this video. Like I said, I'm now going off to film. I'm going off, I'm going to sit right here. I'm literally going to press stop then I'm going to press record. Um, I'm going to film my bookmark video and then I'm going to film the opening for the Secret Squirrel Project, which is very exciting. And then I need to go and put my feet up and recharge these batteries. It's the 16th of March and this is really not a very flattering angle, but I am in the spare room and there are just no good backgrounds in here today. I'm currently on sprints. I'm muted. I'm double checking. Um, I'll put the sprints in the description in case you're interested in watching them back or using them. Um, I'm having such a lovely time. If you have what, if you have been on the sprints with me today, thank you so much. I realised midweek that I had a ton of marking that I was going to have to get done this weekend and it's just a lot more fun when I hang out on sprints with you guys and chat every sort of 45 minutes and do check-ins so that's what I'm doing today it's been another mad week which is why I look like this also I'm wearing the pyjamas that Charlie chose for me as part of my Mother's Day gift uh, which I think I showed you in the last clip they're so comfy they're really oversized which I love um it's been another mad week at work just so much happening and we also went out on Thursday night, the English faculty went out. I don't think I filmed a single clip though, but we went to see The Woman in Black. I'll put a picture of the poster up here, which I've seen before and it's a ghost story. I've seen it, like I think it's the fourth or fifth time I've seen it and it still scares me deeply every single time. I jumped many times and I think I might have let out a tiny scream uh, on one of them. Uh, but yeah, really enjoyed that. That was really fun, but it was just a really long week. It, you know, Monday to Friday this week, I worked 55 hours which is quite a few. And now I'm working all day. I've been working, it's now quarter past one. I've been working since half past seven this morning, getting year 10 and year nine marked. I've got year eight to do, but I left that at school. I was like, that's where I'm drawing the line. I'll do two lots, but not three. So yeah, I'm coming to you tired and a bit ragged around the edges, but you know, we're making it work. Um, I've also got Jack here with me in the spare room, you could probably just hear him crunching biscuits. I had to take him back to the vets this week because he's still limping on his leg. He's still holding it like right up and not putting weight on it. So I took him back to the vets. He's got two more weeks of bed rest and painkillers and anti-inflammatories and stuff. So the other reason that I'm sat in the spare room today is so I can hang out with him and just keep an eye on him because he's on a different medication and we weren't sure how he was going to handle it. But actually, he seems perfectly fine. Annoyed to be stuck in here, but he seems to be all right. Uh, so yeah, that's all going on. I think that's everything I needed to update you on. So let's talk about books. So the first book I finished this week was my other reread for the month, uh, which is The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. This is the third or fourth time I've read this book and it's a five star every single time. So this is definitely one for the forever collection. Um, this is, as it says on the front, The Untold Lives of the Women Killed by Jack the Ripper. And it takes each of the five canical victims, which was Polly, Annie, Elizabeth, Catherine and Mary Jane. And it looks at their life it very much takes the focus away from Jack the Ripper in fact I don't think he's even mentioned my name 
um, through the book, except for in the introduction um, and a little bit at the end. Where's the cat gone? I think he's going to try and use the literature now. That's really good timing. Um, and it very much puts them back in the forefront of their own stories as they should be. And it is one of those books that will make you angry. It will make you emotional. Um, and I highly, highly recommend it. If you are interested in nonfiction, if you're interested in true crime, if you are interested in feminist literature, just I really feel like everyone should be picking this up. Sorry for the cut there. Jack was having a wee and I didn't think we needed that as background noise and then him like scraping the cat litter to cover it and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, apologies for that. My life is so glamorous right now. I'm going to go and deal with that in a second. Uh, and now he's having a bath at my feet. Uh, so the next book that I finished was Perfect Crime by Helen Fields, which was read by Robin Lang as I've been doing all year so far. I reread that on audiobook. Um, it's book number five in the Luke Canlac series. This is a police procedural set in Edinburgh following the murder squad and it was the major incident team or something i can never remember what they're actually called um but this is the fifth book in the series and i am sad that i have only got book six and seven to go on my reread um i'm actually currently reading something different on audiobook i'm trying to break them up a little bit but i will be going on to the next book very shortly uh, definitely in next month's vlog if not at the end of this one and yeah i just love this series i gave it a four star i actually raised my read my rating slightly from last time when i first read it i gave it three stars this time i'm giving it four i just think they're so brilliantly written and you care about the characters it's really dark the whole series is dark so please check content warnings before you pick this series up um this one in particular has a particular focus hello jay on um suicide so just be aware of that as a tale uh, but it's really brutally written uh, so just be careful. But yeah, I love the way that this was put together and the writing and the characters and all the rest of it. I mean, the characters, you know, the police officers that we follow, not the serial killer. Um, but yeah, it was an easy four start for me. And then the final book I finished this week, I finished this morning and I kind of hate finished it. And that was The Woman Who Lied by Claire Douglas. This was bought for me by a very kind colleague at work for my birthday last year. And it's just confirmed, like, this kind of book just is not for me anymore. This is a domestic thriller. And we follow an author who has been writing a long-standing crime series. And she's just finished the final book in that series. And then things start happening to the people in her lives that appear in her previous books. Um, and, yeah, it kind of goes from there. Um, I gave us two stars. I gave two stars to The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager last month because I actively hated that book. I will put my February wrap up in the description if you want to see me actually fully rant about it. This one I'm not going to rant about because there's just nothing to say. This got a two star because it was so dull. Like I predicted who the murderer was in the first 50 pages and just it was just really meandering. Nothing really made sense. There were huge plot holes and I really didn't like the main character so I finished it it was an easy read it was a quick read it was a good read for like when I needed an easy read in the week when I was so busy but yeah I won't be picking up any more Claire Douglas and this kind of domestic thriller just definitely isn't for me so those are three books that I finished Jack's now having his bath bye look there he is Jay he's got his back to the camera he's like I'm not talking to you you shut me in this room um those are the three books that I finished I am today marking and doing life admin. Tomorrow is household chores, but hopefully in between it, I will get to sit and read a bit and have a bath and relax. We have two more weeks after term. Is that right? Yeah, two more weeks. One, nine days. We finish on the Thursday of, of the second week. So next week is my heavy week. And then one more week after that. And then it's Gary's birthday on Friday, which is very exciting. And I have lots of plans. Um... So yeah, this weekend is for marking, life admin, adulting, and if I'm lucky, a little bit of reading.
I feel like I'm cosplaying as myself today and I am into it. It is the 22nd of March and I've not had the best week. <laughs> um, I feel like, I think I mentioned this in a previous clip or a previous video, but I feel like I'm getting close to burnout again, which is quite scary. Um, for anyone that's new here, I experienced burnout last June. I'll put my June vlog in the description. I've watched that back a few times and I don't really talk about it very much. I talk about it a little bit, but I feel like I was still processing what was happening at the time, but I'll put that anyway in the description in case you're interested. Um, and it took me quite a long time to recover from and I'm starting to display some of the same sort of symptoms or behaviours or however you want to put it. Um, I had a stomach bug this week, so that was a fun 48 hours. Uh, and I'm just feeling, I'm feeling quite low and very tired and very anxious. Um, so yeah, that's what's been going on this week. I did, uh, when I went back to school on Thursday, I did um, have a chat with my manager, my head of department, and she's already put stuff in place to help support me, which is amazing. But then I also feel guilty that I need that level of support still four years in. But then I, yeah, it's just, it's a whole thing. My brain is a whole thing at the moment. Um, so we have four more days left of term, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week. That's literally the first four days of the week. I don't know why I told you that. Um, and then we're into the Easter holiday because Friday is bank holiday and it's Gary's birthday. And I've got lots of nice things planned. So I just need to try and recharge my batteries enough this weekend to get me through the next four days. And then I can kind of uh, reassess at Easter. Um, so today I am by myself today. Well, Gary's currently upstairs, but he's going to go and see a friend of his for lunch. And it was kind of well-timed because he literally would not mind if I, if we were together for a weekend and I took myself off uh, by myself. He'd be totally fine with that. But I kind of feel less guilty. Or I don't feel guilty about it at all because he's going to go and see his friend. So I'm going to take myself into Bristol. I was just going to kind of curl up at home, but I have been like rotting <laughs> here um, during the week. And I feel like part of the problem is all I'm doing at the moment is I go to work, I come home, I go to bed, I go to work, I come home, I go to bed. So I'm going to try and like bust out of that routine a little bit today um i'm gonna take myself into bristol and have a little mooch and i was gonna vlog it i actually started a vlog this morning and i've already scrapped it i was just like i don't feel like documenting my entire day today i just want to relax and enjoy it so apologies that vlog hasn't happened um i am trying to dress for endorphins today i did ask those of you that follow me on instagram to help me out because honestly the decision fatigue at the moment i literally can't make any more choices uh, so you guys voted on a few polls for me and chose my dungarees. This is the first wear I think they've had this year, I think. Um, and I decided to go for my obnoxiously bright um, rainbow glittery jumper, which is actually, I think, in my profile picture, which is why I feel like I'm cosplaying as myself. I also got new glasses yesterday, which I realised look pretty much exactly like my old ones. However, the difference in the lens is wild. Like I had my eye test a couple of weeks ago and the optician actually laughed when she finished the test and was like, yeah, you need new glasses. Um, and they're not like a massive step up in terms of the actual lenses, but one of my eyes is weaker than the other. So the other one is having to work harder to counterbalance it. And there's some sort of jiggery pokery in the lenses. I don't know. She did explain it to me, but I can't remember, which like means that the, the eye that's weaker will have a stronger lens on it or something that, but anyway, it should make life easier and stop me having so many headaches. So I was just listening for cats. Um, so I picked these up yesterday and the world is honestly in HD. It's wild i can't believe how far i can see as well when i'm like looking out the window and stuff uh so that's nice um but yeah i thought i would make an effort or like not make an effort as in like i want to dress up and be real fashionable because we all know i don't care but i just want to be comfortable and feel like bright and fun so i've also got my um umbrella earrings in again i am obsessed with these and I've got my beautiful gold heart necklace that Anna Louisa were kind enough to send me as well so I kind of got my favorite outfit on I'm going to also put my wedding shoes on, which were blue Converse in case you didn't know, Converse high tops. And I'm going to go into Bristol and I'm just going to see what I feel like doing. I'm be very gentle with myself. I'm not like, right, I need to be in town for like four hours and do all the bookshops, all that kind of stuff. It's not that one of those days. I am going to obviously get bubble tea. I think I'm going to get some sushi for lunch. I'm going to go to Waterstones and whichever other bookshops or general shops I feel like doing and just have a gentle mooch about. And then on the way home, I need to stop at Tesco and get bits for dinner we're just gonna do because we both be out for lunch so we're just gonna do like picky bits for dinner which is one of my favorite things plus i need to buy mints because husband requested lasagna for tomorrow night i bought all the rest of the ingredients in the food shop didn't buy mints so i need to get that um and then tomorrow will just be a gentle day at home the two of us we might go for breakfast if we can be bothered 
and I also need to wrap his birthday presents because like I said his birthday's on Friday I've wrapped nothing and I've got a lot of wrapping to do so I need to go on with that uh so that'll be the weekend so I'm just trying to be gentle and just only do things I want to do and not be stressed and not be trying to try not to be thinking ahead too far but yeah it's not been a great brain week this week um so yes I think those are all the life updates. I do have, somehow, I have got five books to talk to you about <laughs> since I spoke to you last weekend. I have DNF2 and then finished three. So let's talk about the DNFs first of all, because uh, actually I was reading one when I was spoken to you last. Um, I decided to DNF Do I Know You by Emily Wibberley and Austin Sigmund Bro Broker. Broker. This was sent to me, I think I said this, said this in the last bit, this was very kindly sent to me by Book Break. It came in a bundle of books. Um, and I think they were just sending out possibly just co co like co extra copies that they had to people. Um, so I didn't request this, so I don't feel bad about DNFing it. It's also just not my kind of thing at all. We're following a married couple who are going on holiday for their fifth wedding anniversary and their marriage is in a really bad place. They're really not talking to each other or communicating. Um, and on the first night in the hotel bar, a stranger mistakes them for strangers and introduces the couple to each other as if they've never met before and they decided to go along with this and kind of start dating as if they were back at the start of their relationship i got about 80 pages into this and it, it's one of those things i was kind of intrigued by the premise however there are two tropes that i hate which is second chance romance and the miscommunication trope and this one uses both of those really heavily and i just wanted to shout it was just like just have a conversation please just talk to your wife just talk to your husband talk to a therapist talk to someone and i was just getting really frustrated and i just i just couldn't get past that initial bit so yeah that was not for me and that was a dnf and then i'm gonna have to pick this up carefully because the cover feels horrible it's this weird it feels like sandpaper and I, I don't like it uh this is the children's bible by lydia millet um chloe sent me this for christmas and her note in it says i'm i'm forcing this book on you because i need an educated opinion it was weird i'm just hoping the right weird for you to enjoy it but no pressure and yeah i read the first sort of 30 pages and i was like i texted her i was like i don't care and she was like dnf it because it doesn't get any better um and this is about a group of of kids on holiday with their parents and it's all a bit weird and like i said i got like 30 pages in and i was like yeah i don't care and so i dnf'd it so there we go sometimes it's just there's not like a big deep reason or like that was stuff going or that the bad book or anything i just didn't care okay then books i did finish and i gave five stars to garlic and the witch by brie paulson this was sent to me by the lovely mary at mary Monk stories for christmas i just said that now i just want to double check it was yeah it was i loved this i read uh, garlic and the vampire last year it's a little graphic novel it's so cute and i think i gave garlic and the vampire five stars but this is like a higher five stars um i just think it was completely adorable and it we're following garlic it was this little got you know this little vegetable here and she's going through some changes and i just loved how this was dealt with it felt like a metaphor for puberty and growing up um and i just loved it and you know garlic is this little anxious bean and i would you know die to protect her and i love all the supporting characters and i love the art style like each chapter starts with a you know start with bearing carrot and then like i don't want to give spoilers um and then like each chapter the like the seed is growing and i just i just love this i i don't know how you could read it and not give it five stars to me it was just completely perfect and it was such a joy to read so mary again thank you so much it was just the perfect thing to sit and read when i felt sad um and yeah it was lovely and i just want more and i feel like i need like a film or like a netflix series or something with garlic and all of her friends and I loved it and I feel like it was just a perfect read. So yeah, that was a definite five stars. Then I gave four stars to um, Gina Martin's No Offence But How to Have Difficult Conversations for Meaningful Change. I thought this was brilliant. This was recommended to me when I was on some inset training at the start of September um, for school. And this covers a whole range of topics. And what I really like is Gina Martin um, is a white woman and she is... Um, someone who's clearly very educated and knows a lot about things like feminism and sexism and all that kind of stuff but what she's done is she's gathered together people who uh have experiences outside of her own so that they can give their opinion and it covers this whole range of topics and it kind of breaks down those topics for you and then explains or gives you ideas and, and hints and tips on how to have these difficult conversations uh so it's things like boys will be boys 
Feminism is about women having the same rights and power as men to play devil's advocate. I hate that phrase. Um, children shouldn't be allowed to transition because what if they change their minds? If you don't want attention, cover up. Men aren't doing anything to help feminism. Not all men. Again, another phrase I really hate. Uh, we need fast fashion for poor people. I don't do politics, etc, etc. So this whole collection of essays um, written by a variety of people. And then every other essay is Gina Martin talking about a specific topic. Um, and I just thought this was really well done. I gave it four stars rather than five because I feel like for me personally, this is entry level and I've already read a lot of the kind of opinions and ideas and stuff already in other things, which isn't the book's fault. But for me as a reading experience, I couldn't give it five stars. I do, however, really highly recommend this one. And I'm going to be recommending it to a lot of people at work because I feel like it's one of those books where if you work with young people, you will get faced with a whole range of topics and being able to break those topics down and approach them in an understanding way in an open way is so important um but also just is you know rather than specific topics this also just gives you some general it's like a general toolkit of how to have tricky conversations and i just think that's so important so yeah gave us gave this four stars would definitely recommend it then the last book that i finished so far is an audiobook so i'll put the uh, picture up here but I've got it on this bit of paper as usual and that was Sugar Baby by Celine St. Clair narrated by Sarah Novak um, and this was recommended or was mentioned it wasn't recommended directly um, but uh, Aoife at Words of Clover mentioned it in a recent wrap-up if I can find her wrap-up for it I'll pop it in the description um, and I immediately looked it up on Ever and downloaded it oh here comes her <laughs> this is what she does she literally runs so our kitchen through there which is where the cat flap is she i've watched her do it before she goes to the, to the end of the garden our garden is tiny but she goes to the back wall of the garden and then she sprints as fast as possible through the cat flap all the way through the house and then ends up on this windowsill up here you can just see her shadow just there and it's just the funniest thing she does it all day long um and then as she gets here she like slams the brakes on and then jumps up and i don't know why she does it but she does it all day and it's really funny um what was I talking about? Sugar Baby. So yeah, uh, Aoife mentioned this. I went immediately to Everand and downloaded it because uh, I needed a break from the Luke Kalanak series as much as I'm enjoying that. I've only got two books left. So I'm kind of like, let's take a pause for a minute and listen to something else. I really enjoyed this. I gave this four stars. There are a lot of content warnings and it's very adult. So just be careful going into it. Make sure you look it up. Um, and we are following Agnes, who is working as a cleaner in London. She's in her early 20s and she feels like her life is kind of a dead end. Um, she's got a very religious mother and she's got a very uh, intelligent and kind of exam focused sister. And she feels like she doesn't fit in in the house um, because she wants to go out and she wants to dress up and she wants to wear makeup and she um is very sexual and she's kind of exploring her sexuality but she feels like she can't do that in her mother's house because she feels really stifled um and she has a job as a cleaner and one day she meets emily whose house is she's cleaning and she is introduced to the world of sugaring or sugar babies um which are predominantly young women there's probably a male equivalent um who spend time with men for money um, and it's about how she gets into this world and then what happens to her in that world. And I really enjoyed this. I really liked how it's written without shame um, and it's very non-judgmental. Um, and it's also just a really interesting world that she finds herself in. And it's a very different world from where she starts. And yeah, I just really liked Agnes and I really liked following her and seeing what she got up to. Um, I would definitely recommend it on audiobook. Sarah Novak does a great job of, of narrating it. Um, I didn't give it five stars. It just didn't give me that feeling. And the end really abrupt. It was suddenly like, oh, are we done? Um, but I would recommend it if you are able to deal with the subject matter. So yeah, that was the last book that I finished this week. So like I said, the plan now, what time is it? Like 20 past nine, because I woke up ridiculously early and then accidentally woke Gary up because I was doing housework downstairs. I thought it was being really stealthy and clearly I wasn't, poor man. Um, yeah, I'm going to go for a little mooch and try and recharge the batteries and then four more days next week and then I got two weeks off.
It's the 24th of March and I'm coming to you from our very cluttered spare room. There just seems to be stuff everywhere at the moment because we're starting to like sort through things and I've got like all of Gary's birthday presents here which I need to wrap today and you can just, there's just, there's just stuff. But anyway, I thought I would sit here quickly and chat to you before we go out for breakfast. I had a really nice day yesterday, went into Bristol by myself and as you saw from the B-roll, had a good mooch around. I was only in there for about an hour and a half before I ran out of energy. I only really went, I popped into foils briefly but I just wasn't really feeling it, I needed breakfast. So I went and got some breakfast. Sorry, I'm fiddling with my fringe because as usual, it's driving me crazy. Um, popped into foils briefly, then went and got some breakfast and felt much more with it. And then went into the Waterstones and I was in there for 45 minutes, maybe, maybe an hour. Just had a really slow, thorough mooch around, pick some books up, put some books down, picked up some different books, which I'll show you in a minute. It was really nice. Um, and then I was texting Charlotte, I was like, I've hit my limit, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna go home via Tesco and get something for lunch. Um, and then I was walking back through Bristol and it was like, no, I wanted sushi today. And I think, as I said in my last clip, like my anxiety is really high at the moment, it's really playing up. And I was feeling like I couldn't walk into Yo, Yo Sushi by myself. I've only done it once when I went to see Chloe. Um, and I was just like, no, I, I can't do it by myself today. And then I was walking back through Bristol and it's like, no, I want sushi. This is one of the reasons why I came into Bristol in the first place, because I live in the sticks and we don't get it here. Um, and it was before the lunch run, rush. So I was like, just go in and just order a couple of things, which I did. And I actually had a really lovely lunch. So that was definitely an anxiety win yesterday. I had another one, which I'll tell you about in a minute when I show you the books, because it's book related. Um, and then grabbed some bubble tea, came home. Uh, Gary came back from seeing his friend. And we just hung out and had a slow afternoon and evening and it was just what I needed. It was lovely. Um, and then today he's taking me out for breakfast because he's so cute. Um, and a little wonder. And then I've got some chores to do. So I'll crack through those as quick as possible and then get back on the sofa and read. So yeah, that's a little update since yesterday. So I've got three books that I bought when I was in town. I've got one parcel or package from Book Break which is a bit mysterious, so we'll open that together. And then I finished a book. So the three books that I bought whilst I was in Waterstones yesterday are these three. So um, I picked up What You Are Looking For Is In The Library by Michiko Ayamaya. I've probably said that incorrectly. I'll find out how to say it uh, once I review the book. Um, and this is a book about books and like a magic library. Um, and yeah, it says uh, the character is able to sense exactly what each visitor to her library is looking for and provide just the book recommendation to help them find it. And it, this feels like the perfect cosy book about books and I keep looking at it I've been looking at it for a while and it's obviously got a black cat on the cover which drew me in and yesterday I was just like yeah I just I, I just want to read this and this seems you know it's short uh, it's like 250 pages and yeah it's also translated by Alison Watts as well um so yeah I picked that one up finally I would honestly the number of times I've looked at it in bookshops over the last couple months is crazy then I also picked up Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. The reason I picked this up was purely because Mel, from a book fiend named Mel, put up yesterday, as I was getting ready to leave, a video where she was recommending books to booktubers and she was kind enough to recommend me another book in that video. I will obviously link it. You should go and watch it. Follow her. Follow everybody else mentioned. Um, because she recommended it directly to me and she said that this is like historical fantasy, which sounds really good, and it's about a girl who is cursed by a fairy um, and loses half her soul and Mel was saying it's kind of autism coded um and yeah I just thought you know what let's pick that up so yeah I hunted this out in uh, Waterstones and grabbed that so I will read that shortly and then I would never usually I always have a rummage through the clearance stack <clears throat> I never usually find anything uh, that I want but I found this which is the famous five collection one so this is the first three books so this is five on a treasure island five go adventure again five run away together um, and I've been wanting to reread these books for a while, but I've been scared to do it. And then, who was it? Someone was reading it and said, actually, the first one. Oh, it was Abby. Abby from Abby of Pelinor, um, read or reread the first one recently and said, actually, it holds up okay because I'm concerned with how old these books are that they will not have aged well. Um, but she said that the first one stands up okay. And I was like, okay, if I see it, I'm going to grab it. Um, and I saw this in the clearance bin because the cover is folded it's not that bad but like it's also not obviously a pristine perfect copy um so i grabbed that took it to the till um and i had points on my card so i got you know 10 pounds off all that stuff walked out of the store looked at the receipt and i'd been charged the full price which is uh 10.99 this was my second anxiety win technically my first because i hadn't gone to get sushi yet but this was the other anxiety win yesterday because previously i would have just been like doesn't matter and just left um and i went back in 
I took my receipt back in and went back to the till and, you know, was very like, sorry to bother you, this has happened. And the girl was really lovely and she was like, yeah, it should be three pounds, uh, not the 10.99 that you've paid. So they refunded me that like seven or eight quid, whatever it was, back onto my card. And I was like, that feels like an anxiety win. So yeah, I really want to reread these books. In a Brighton is a writer that made me a reader, but I have been worried about picking them back up because of how they might have aged. Uh, but we will give at least the first book a try. This bind up, like I said, it's got all three in it. So it's like 550 pages, but also I feel like I'll fly through it and I might pick this up this weekend. I'm kind of feeling the nostalgia vibes at the moment. Then I came home to a parcel from book break, which I very naughtily opened. Uh, and this is what was awaiting me. So we've got a little package of sweets. Oh, it's got a sticker in it as well. I didn't spot the sticker on the back. And these are like chewy sweets that you get like this reminds me of like holidays as a kid when you go to like Spain or France or somewhere um and I love these so that was a very nice thing um they also sent me the book which is wrapped can't really see I think it's that way up what this is through the wrapping and then there was this whole load of um information and I won't read you the whole thing because it's a lot but the first bit says dear reader have you ever wondered why anyone ever invited Miss Marple anywhere I mean every time she went somewhere someone ended up dead Ditto for a little town, St. Mary Mead. No way I'm visiting that place. But I was visiting Italy a couple of years ago when, with my husband when this occurred to me. Maybe it's because of cli it's, it's climate change hot. Or maybe it was because it had been too long between ap ap Aperol spritzes. Who can say? And then it kind of goes on a little bit. And then at the end it says, 10 days, 8 suspects, 5 cities, 3 bodies, 1 trip to die for. And it's signed Caroline, Caroline Mack. Ca sorry, Catherine Mack. And then we've got this travel planner um, for the trip and who's on the trip. Um, and then some notes. Um, and it looks like we're solving a murder, but I haven't actually opened the book itself. So let's do this, which is all very exciting. So thank you very much, book break. I haven't had like a PR package for a while. So it's always exciting when it happens. Let's see what this is together. I can't remember what this is. I don't remember asking for it, I'll be honest. Oh, look at this, right, okay. Oh, it's in a, in a slip sleeve. I was like, how do I get in? So that's the front. So you've got all the travel tags and stuff on it. It says, every time I go on vacation, someone dies by Catherine Mack. <coughs> and this is coming out May 2024. So I'll read it next month. Um, and it just says on the back, I'll take it out of the suitcase in a minute, but look, this is the back. This is really cleverly done. My name is Eleanor Dash. I'm the best-selling author of the Vacation Mystery Series and to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the book's publication, my publishers have sent me on the tour of the Beauty and Malfi Coast with a gaggle of other authors and some mega fans. I would love to go to the Amalfi Coast. All I've been thinking about recently is how to end the series so I can get my ex, Connor Smith, the series protagonist, and frankly, the pain in my ass, out of my life. But Connor's on this tour too. And he's just told me someone's trying to kill him. Wait, What? Also, how convenient for me. I want to kill him off in the series, and if what he's saying is true, then it may be the answer to all my prayers. I'm joking. I guess I'll have to figure out who's trying to do away with him, especially since the prime suspects are all on this tour. Let's help no one else dies before I solve this case. Okay, this looks really fun. Let's have a look at this cover together. Oh, that look does look really fun. So like I said, title is, Every time I go on vacation, someone dies by Catherine Mack. And it says at the bottom, It turns out writing a murder mystery is easier than living one. So yeah, this looks really fun. And like I said, that's out in May. So um, I will be reading that next month, which I'm sure will get me right in the mood for summertime. That's so cool. So that's really exciting. Um, and then the book that I finished yesterday, I read this mostly yesterday. I started it last weekend and then mostly smashed through it yesterday. Um, and that was A Demon's Guide to Booing a Witch by Sarah Hawley. This is a companion novel to A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon, which I read and loved last year. Picked it up completely at random on another Bristol bookshop trip and really enjoyed it and then pre-ordered this one. I've also pre-ordered the third one, which is going to be called A Werewolf's Guide to Seducing a Vampire. That comes out in August. And yeah, I gave this four and a half stars. This is fun. It's sexy. Uh, we've got enemies to lovers. I can't really tell you much about the story because it carries, it is a companion novel, but it carries on the story from the first book. It literally picks up like the same day <coughs> that that one ends. And we are following slightly different characters, but they definitely intersect. So I don't want to give away any spoilers. Uh, but yeah, we have enemies to lovers. We have the only one bed trope. There's a quest. Um, and I just had the best time. I just, I couldn't give it quite five stars. I think it's slightly too long. Um, I think if it had lost sort of 50 or 75 pages, I probably would have been 
a bit more tightly written for me but I really thoroughly enjoy Sarah Hawley's writing and I'm really looking forward to the next one which comes out in August so yeah I would definitely recommend it. if you're looking for a fun supernatural romance it is spicy um it's most definitely not closed door <laughs> Uh, then I would recommend picking this up. There are also some seri more serious themes in this, like there wasn't the first one as well. So we're dealing with uh, a character who's been in an abusive relationship and dealt with coercive control. There's also a really toxic relationship with a parent. Um, those are the main content warnings, I think, but obviously check any content warnings if you need them uh, before you pick up a book. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed this. This was fun. Like I said, a little bit naughty, really good time. So yeah, we definitely recommend this one. Um, yeah. So that is all the bookish updates. I can hear my husband and I go out of the shower. So I need to go and quickly put my coat and my shoes on and go and have some breakfast with my favourite person. It's the 28th of March and we are now on holiday. This is my end of term dress. It's the Joni uh, Books and Cats dress. I only wear it on the last day of term. I've also got my dangly book earrings in, which I love. And just to warn you, just to preface this clip before we get into it, because I feel like it might be quite a long clip, I am exhausted. So I apologise in advance if I make literally no sense. Um, it's been quite a roller coaster week at work. There are some possibilities for what I might do next year that have come up, which I can't talk about yet. Um, I will tell you guys once I've made some decisions, but just know that there are big decisions to be made right now and my brain is whirring. Uh, so we've got all of that going on in the background. Um, like I said, today was the last day of term, so I'm now off for just over two weeks. Uh, tomorrow's Good Friday. It's also Gary's birthday tomorrow, so we're both off and I have lots of plans for his birthday weekend, but I can't talk about it right now because he's like in the next room and I don't want him to overhear. But I will do B-roll so you'll see some of the stuff that we get up to and I will tell you all about it when I come and sit back down, probably on Sunday, probably. Um, so yeah, lots of nice things coming up. I'm also gonna go and see Charlotte next week. That'll be an April's vlog, uh, which I'm so excited about. So yeah, lots of just nice things to do in the next two weeks. I've also got a lot of marking. I've got three sets of assessments to mark, which is probably about two days work. Um, but also lots of resting and eating nice things and seeing people I love and all of that stuff. So I've got quite the update to give you. If I pick all of this up, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> it's two parcels there. So I finished one book, because as usual, my reading is slowed right down. I've had two books sent to me by book break. I've got two bookish parcels that I ordered and then some lovely person has sent me a massive parcel from my wish list. I think I know who it's from because they messaged me on Instagram and there's only one thing on my wish list that is this size. And if it's what if that's what they've picked, like that's completely ridiculous because there are like my wish list, obviously you guys are kind enough sometimes to send me things from it, but it's not for that. Um, I mean, obviously I link it, and stuff in videos so I can see how people would be like what do you mean that's not what it's for for me it's for me to like keep track of the books I want to read and their prices and so when stuff goes on sale or whatever or gets cheaper that's when I grab things um but yeah I think this particular person has been ridiculously generous but we'll get to that last I think so the book that I finished was the first in the Famous Five collection, which is Five on Treasure Island by Ina Blyton. You saw me talk about this in the last clip. This was such a nostalgia trip for me. I was really nervous as to how this will have aged because it was published in the 1940s. It was absolutely fine in terms of um, language and all that kind of stuff. And it was just so lovely to fall back into this story. It's probably 25 years, 30 years not 30, probably 25 years since I read this story and I just knew it word for word. And I love how it all gets set up in this one. We're literally just meeting um, the kids. So we've got Julian, Dick and Anne and then their cousin George and Timmy the dog. And they meet, they go to stay with George for the first time and they meet Timmy and they have this adventure on this island, obviously, um, which is the one that you can see on the cover. And it was just this lovely nostalgic trip down memory lane and I thoroughly enjoyed it, flew through it. It's only sort of 200 pages um, and I had a lovely time, gave it four stars. I'm definitely going to read the others. So there's five Go Adventuring Again and five Run Away Together in this bind up. Um, I think there's like 12, 21 stories altogether. Um, 
And yeah, I just really enjoyed it for the nostalgia. So yeah, gave it four stars. Excuse me, that's my belly complaining. Um, gave it four stars. We'll definitely read the others in this collection. So there was that one. Then I've been sent two books by Book Break. One of them I definitely requested. The other I don't think I did. But that's fine. It's very lovely for them to send me things. Uh, so the first one is um, Where There Was Fire by John Manuel Ar Arias. Arias? I don't know how to say that yet. I will. Um, this is already out. This came out in February. Oh, on 22nd of February this came out. So this will go just into my general reading list and will get read eventually. I do really love this cover. Um, and it says, introducing a stunning new voice on the Picador list. Costa Rica, 1968. When a lethal fire erupts at the American Fruit Company's most lucrative plantation, the future of Teresa Cepeda Val Valverde's family is changed forever. Now, 27 years later, Teresa and her daughter Lyra are still picking up the pieces. Lyra wants nothing to do with Teresa, but is desperate to find out what happened to her family that fateful night. Teresa, haunted by a missing husband and the bitter ghost of her mother, is unable to reconcile the past. What unfolds is a story of a mother and daughter trying to forgive what they do not yet understand and the mystery at the heart of one family's rupture, steeped in machismo, jealousy and greed. And then it says, brimming with ancestral spirits, omens and the forces of nature, John Manuel Aria's extraordinary debut, debut novel weaves a brilliant tapestry of love, lost, lo sorry, of love, lost and found again and ultimately redemption. That sounds so good. I don't think, like I said, I don't think I requested it, but they were very kind to send that my way. So I will read that soon. And like I said, that cover... I don't know if the final copy is any different, but that is a beautiful cover. Let's put that up on my bed. Uh, and then the, the one that I definitely ch uh, requested, but I now can't remember anything about. I just saw the author and I was like, yes, please, um, is uh, The Pairing by Casey McQuiston. This isn't out until August. This comes out on the 6th of August, so I'll read this in July. Um, and I actually absolutely loved, I've read Red, White, Royal Blue, which I adored and One Last Stop, which I thought was brilliant. Um, and this is their next book. So it just says, the wildly anticipated sexy new queer romantic comedy from Casey McQuiston, author of the best-selling books I've already mentioned. And it says, two bisexual exes, Theo and Kit, accidentally book the same European food and wine tour and challenge each other to a hookup competition to prove they're over each other. But sometimes a taste of everything, uh, sometimes a taste of everything only makes you crave what you can't have. This sounds so fun. I might not be able to wait until uh july to read this and i really again really love this cover um yeah so this just sounds really fun so thank you very much book break for sending that my way then i've had two bookish parcels that, of stuff that i ordered we're going to go in the order that they arrived so first of all melena who is also a booktuber i will link her in the description um opened a bookshop an online bookshop and she reached out to me on instagram ages ago this has taken me ages to do so i do apologize melena um and she said oh can i send you some stuff for you to mention on your channel and you can choose some books and things and i was like that's really kind but no um i don't mind taking free stuff from big companies like you know uh pam mcmillan who send me things but when it comes to small indie businesses that are just getting off the ground I will spend my money um, rather than you send me it for free. So I eventually got around to having a look on her website, which I will obviously link in the description. It's so, so lovely. She's selling a mix of secondhand classics and new editions of books. She's also got loads of bookish stuff and there's definitely at least one bookmark in here and also some like postcards because I was obsessed with the stationery bit and they're gonna look so good in my classroom. Um, and yeah, it's arrived. It arrived really quickly. Um, I think she's in, yeah, she's in the Netherlands. And considering it came from the Netherlands, this has arrived so fast. I can't show you the front because it's got my address on. So you're just gonna have to believe me that there's a very cute stamp on the top. So let's open it together. Ooh, off in one. Okay, oh, this is so cute. Okay, so if I get rid of the address bit, so you can see what I'm seeing. Comes packaged like this. There's one book in here. And then, like I said, I ordered some bookish bits as well. Oh my gosh, it's all so beautifully wrapped. Okay, let me again show you. Look how cute this is. Okay, so those are all the bookish bits, which I'll show you in a minute. This is adorable. Oh, and the book's wrapped and everything. Also, this is a perfect Molly-sized Molly, Molly -sized box. She will enjoy that. So this is the book, beautifully wrapped. This is so cute. As you can see, I went with Jane Eyre. Okay, I already have two editions of Jane Eyre but I saw this edition and I was like this is so cute wow it's thick um and I was like that's the book I'm gonna buy there were loads of things I could have gone for but I had to try and restrain myself a little bit um so yeah this is the what edition are you 
I've got a few books in these editions, so it's going to fit right in. This is the collector's edition. Is it? Is it Wordsworth? So yeah, this is the Wordsworth collector's edition. They're so cute. I always forget how big Jane Eyre is. And then on the back it says, I am no bird and no net ensnares me. So my brain just dotted there for a second. So, so lovely. And it's got these like, oop, definitely nearly hit myself in the face with them. Burgundy um, end pages. And yeah, I've got loads of editions of this book, but I just saw this one and I was like, that's so cute. And it will fit in with my other classics. So yeah, that's going straight onto the shelves. And then I all treated myself to some bookish bits. Look how cute this is with the packaging. I love it. Highly recommended. Um, like I said, I will leave her linked in the description. Um, oh, there's a little note from Elena just saying, Hi, Victoria, thank you so much for your order. I hope the cards bring you much joy, Elena. I'm sure they will. So this is the bookmark. And I realise that I sell bookmarks, but it doesn't mean I don't buy them from other people. Beautifully wrapped again in this lovely paper. Ooh. I'm trying to open it in a way that doesn't rip it because it's just so nice. Um, oh, look, right, I'll show you the bookmark in a second, but just look how cute the paper is that she uses. It's just absolutely adorable. And then, oh, she sent me an extra one. So uh, this was the one that I ordered and it's a Little Women one. Look how beautiful that is. So um, yeah, I think it's one of the original covers. Just absolutely beautiful. And then she also sent me this one which is, oh, I can't read that because it's in Dutch, um, but you've got these, I think, female authors. I'm going to make a guess. I think these are female authors on the front. And again, look how beautiful that is and so well designed. So that's very exciting. I will also keep this note from her as another bookmark. And then I went a bit mad on the prints, but these are going to look so good in my classroom. So I ordered three sets. Like I said, I know it's excessive. Again, come packaged really beautifully. I'm trying to take this off. I might have to rip this bit to get it off. Oh dear. These were made by Bookishly and I am genuinely obsessed. So we've got book covers. So we've got, we've got Emma, we've got Mansfield Park, we've got Pride and Prejudice. Look at these designs. Um, Sense and Sensibility, North, uh, Northanger Abbey and Persuasion. So that was obviously the Jane Austen collection. Like I am either going to put these up in my classroom or I might put them in a frame and put them somewhere in my house because I'm obsessed with these. I mean, they look great on the website. They look even better in person. I'm just obsessed with this illustration style. Um, then I, let's do this one. Then I got the Shakespeare collection because obviously I did. Uh, so we've got Hamlet, The Tempest, Romeo and Juliet, which I'm doing with year eight in term six. Wow, that's such, I really love that colour palette. Um, As You Like It and A Midsummer Night's Dream. This is my favourite one and I'm doing this with year seven uh, again in term six and they're going to look gorgeous. Those will definitely go into my classroom. And then finally, I saw these ones and I was like, I'm going to have to get those as well. Um, And these are like fantasy ones because apparently I'm fully in my fantasy era now so we have Narnia again look at that um and it says at the bottom it says some adventures lead to our destiny we have Mordor uh where the shadows lie we have the land of Oz the emerald city gorgeous we have Neverland where dreams are born we have Pemberley some of the finest woods in the county or country country there we go and we have wonderland we're all mad here so yeah again absolutely obsessed with those and they're gonna look awesome in my classroom so that's a little haul from Milena. um there is now so much packaging around me everywhere let's make some space and then i did another i did another lauren order i'm not even sorry at this point um so yeah i ordered some more wax melts and things and i'm very excited that's just the receipt i don't need to see how much I've spent this time um and I definitely went overboard <laughs> like ridiculously so so let's get into this if I just got rid of all the packaging see excessive I told you I, in fact I knew I'd ordered so much that I had to buy more storage for under the bed for where I keep my wax melts so firstly I bought the greatest show which is peanuts and maple syrup this is again one of her um cups that she does and these ones oh my days I'm obsessed. Look, they are moulded to look like peanuts. Those smell incredible. I will also obviously link Lauren's um, 
business in the description her website i got a free gift which is fighting dragons with you that's really nice that's one i've had before and then i got luke's dino which is the coffee and musk and i'm really interested in this for reasons that will become apparent later in the year um oh that smells so good okay so i got that one and then this was the reason i did the order this is suki's kitchen which Lauren had brought back, which is marshmallow cupcakes. This is the reason I, I even went on her website and then spent way too much money. Man, I want to eat that. That smells sweet and kind of chocolatey and fruity. And yes, give me that. Thank you very much. I'm probably going to burn that today. And then I got three more. I went way over the top. Did I buy these or did she give me these? I feel like... She might have added these in. Hang on, let me check my receipt. Because I don't think... Without putting my address on the internet. Oh yeah, that was it. This was the other reason why I did an order. Because she started doing mystery boxes. And I flipping love a mystery box. Like uh, Leanne at uh, Literary Divergence um, used to do them on her Etsy. And I'm obsessed. Because then it feels like an actual like gift to myself. So she's been doing, Lauren's been doing, uh, started doing mystery boxes and you can do them in like five pound increments. So this is a five pound mystery box, which comes like this. And she has sent me Fairy Cottage. And now obviously a lot of her scents I've had before. So I knew I probably wasn't going to get one. I hadn't had. I love Fairy Cottage. This is Brambled Berry and it kind of smells like, to me, it smells like like a chocolate cake with strawberries on it. I love it. So that's very exciting. She also sent me Fearless, which is Summer Air and Love Stories. I haven't had this one. So that's exciting. So that's another one for the summer collection. Oh yeah. That's like sweet and citrusy, but clean as well. It almost smells like a clean cotton one underneath. And then I Love You, You Idiot, which is again, part of the Gilmore Girls one, which I've already got. And it smells, it's beautiful. It smells like love hearts. So highly recommend. So yeah, you can see that I've been overspending, which is hilarious. And then one of you has completely spoiled me. So like I said, there's only one thing on my wish list that is this size. And if it is what I think it is, well, whatever it is, I'm completely blown away. And also I think, I think this is from Vicky because she messaged me on Instagram and said, have you checked your post box? And I was like, I haven't had time to film in person, like film me opening it. So I think this is from her. And it is what I thought it was. Oh my gosh. We're losing the light. So we're gonna speak, we're gonna do this fairly quickly. Right, let's find a gift note first and just check who it's from. That's the receipt. <laughs> Come on, there we go. Right, so yeah, it is from Vicky. She's so lovely. She's a fellow teacher and we chat quite a bit online. Uh, she said, I've been meaning to send you a little something for a while. I hope this goes some way to refilling your cup. Well done on surviving Ofsted. Thank you for all your kind words. You are a truly wonderful human from Vicky. Thank you so much. Like she's definitely someone that's listened to me whinge a lot. So thank you. And thank you for this, because this is the wrong way around. She's bought me volume two of Laura Olympus, which is just ridiculously kind and generous and oh my gosh i can't wait to read this <sighs> you will definitely see this in my august wrap up not august august april wrap up uh because i will just be sitting and devouring this probably in one go at the start of next week thank you so much vicky this is so so generous of you i'm so excited to read the next bit and now i can so yeah, this is a like 20 minute clip of me updating you on the fact that I'm exhausted. It's half term. I've read one book called Three More, <laughs> bought a load of stuff. Um, and right now I'm going to tidy all of this up, sort my house out a little bit, run myself a bath and then collapse in a heap. And then tomorrow we get to celebrate my husband.
and those were all the books I read in the month of March. It is now the 2nd of April, I'm just coming in to wrap up the wrap up uh, before I open my April vlog and then go off to see Charlotte for a few days. Um, I haven't finished any more books. Um, yeah, I have been reading, but slowly. I'm definitely really tired, as I've already said about 53,000 times in this video. Um, and also, I just had a really busy family weekend. So Friday, uh, Gary and I went out to, to, to Turtle Bay for lunch, as you will have seen in the B-roll. I also did, you can see these like rainbow cards up here. I did his uh, scavenger hunt, treasure hunt for his presents, which came out really well. And again, you saw B-roll of that. Um, Saturday we dragged the teenager to Western Supermare and had a really nice couple of hours. Here comes Sav. She's on her morning patrol. Sorry, Savvy. Um, she's probably seen a kid outside. She's seen a kid outside is now terrified for her life. Uh yeah, I went to Western Supermare for a few hours, which was really lovely. I had a good walk along the front. Uh went to uh went to the onto the pier and then to the arcades and had some fish and chips and an ice cream and all that kind of stuff. Um and it was just nice to spend some time with the three of us. Um, then the Sunday we had the family over for Gary's birthday celebration. We don't celebrate Easter. Um, so yeah, we were celebrating his birthday with a roast and that amazing cake that my mother-in-law did that you saw. Um, and then yesterday I did all the chores I didn't do Sunday and then managed to curl up and read for a couple hours. So yeah, it's been a good, really lovely uh, long weekend and a nice start to mine and Charlie's holiday. Uh, Gary's now back to work, although he is off with us next week, but you'll see all of us in April's vlog. Um, and like I said, I'm literally going to film this, open my April vlog, and then I'm going to go and get in the car and drive up to see Charlotte. So yeah, March has been a wild month. Uh, we had the birth of my niece, who's absolutely beautiful, who obviously I'm not sharing online because she's not mine to do that with but she's gorgeous and I'm just so excited for my sister and my soon-to-be brother-in-law because they're getting married this summer as well uh so that's been really exciting uh world book day was really fun my my niece was born on world book day and like my little bookish heart was so happy <laughs> that that was the day she chose to make her arrival um yeah we had world book day which is a lot of fun we had Carrie's birthday, we've obviously had our offer accepted on a house that we're buying and we've accepted an offer on ours, so all of that is kind of cranking along in the background. Uh, we also had, obviously, Jack's ongoing issues with his leg. Um, he's still on bed rest, we're now on like week seven. It is looking a lot, lot better. Um, I actually need to go and pick up, hopefully, his last round of antibiotics um, in a minute before I go and see Charlotte. And hopefully, fingers crossed, if everything carries on as it is, he'll be allowed out next weekend. Um, and work's been really tough as ever so yeah it's been an up and down month my mental health has been a little bit all over the place i haven't been great as you've probably seen through parts of this video however i feel like now that we're probably into spring and the clocks have gone forward and the weather's improving hopefully things will get a bit easier um and like i touched on in the last clip there are things going on behind the scenes at work which will hopefully bring some positive change for me from september but I can't talk about that yet. I probably won't be able to talk about it if it happens at all um, until the summer. But yeah, hopefully things will, um, some adjustments will be made and life will be a bit easier from September. Uh, so yeah, that was March. Let's do some stats and then you can go on your merry way. So uh, in March, I read 12 books, which is pretty good. Number of pages was 3,837, which is 123 per day, which is low. I try and aim for 150. Um, I have set myself 50,000 50, page goal I know you said word goal 50,000 page goal on the tracking app that I use which I cannot currently remember the name of it's not Goodreads it's the other one my brain's gone completely out the window um and according to that I'm about 500 pages behind that goal at the moment so I need to do some good reading in April to catch up on that my average star rating was 4.12 so it was a high quality month it was better than February and January actually um in terms of the ratings I gave, so that's really good. My favourite read of the month, I thought about this, I had I gave five stars to two things, five, which is a reread, and Garlic and the Witch. Um, I can't count rereads, uh, so that means that Garlic and the Witch is my favourite book of this month by Brie Paulson, and I love this, and this is also the second graphic novel in my favourite stack, so right now my favourite stack is Heartstopper, Heartstopper Volume 5, it's like the under there um heart stopper volume five and the hobbit and now this which is interesting but i just i keep thinking about it i love it so much it made me so so happy so another massive thank you to uh, mary from mary among stories for sending this to me for christmas i just loved it but i need more and i don't know if there's going to be more but i need more so yeah that was my read of the month for march and then my most disappointing was the woman who lied by claire douglas i gave this two stars so it was my lowest rated 
and I didn't really expect it to be a five star, but I thought it'd be better than two. So yeah, that's my most disappointing read for March. I'd actually forgotten already that I'd read it this month. So yeah, that one was definitely my most disappointing. Uh, my TBR stands at 45, so that's great. We're still below that 50. I think I said, what did I say in my intentions? Was it 50 to, I think I gave myself a little bit of leeway. Uh, no, it just says keep TBR to 50 books. So yeah, we are still just under that. We are up one, I think from, yeah, from February. But at least I'm reading almost at the same rate as coming out. Uh, the oldest book on my TBR is Sorry Bro. That is on my September TBR sub. So you'll see that, not se September, that's from September. So you will see that in my April wrap up. Um, and my sub count is just for me. I didn't do balancing the books. So let's just do it really quickly now. So out was one. No, that was a that was an audio book. So one, two, uh, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten out including the two dnfs and then how many came in so ten out one two three four five six seven eight nine whoa so i'm just about i had one more read than uh than i uh came in my brain is really not engaged here so yeah i'm just about keeping it balanced which is all good like i said i had the two dnfs which was duo nau and a children's bible bible so that was my march wrap up like i said it's been a bit of an up and down month but i'm feeling a lot more positive as we move into april if you made it to this point in the video leave me a garlic emoji because god looks just so cute i'm pretty sure there is one if there isn't leave me a witch emoji so either garlic or a witch uh please subscribe if you would like more of this chaos and i will see you in the next one thanks everyone bye